By August of 1942, most of the construction work on the new Lunga airfield has been completed by the Japanese military, and they are using the airbase for their forces in an attempt to cut off the United States from supplying the Australian islands. This would help the Allies expand into the Japanese Empire, which of course the Japanese are going to deter at all cost. But by the first week of August, the United States had landed in the Solomon Islands and captured Lunga Airfield, renaming it Henderson Airfield, and they began landing their aircraft on the airstrip by the 12th of August. The loss of Lunga was massive for the Japanese. By this point, they are already outnumbered by the US forces landing on the Solomon Islands, and this number will only increase over time. And of course, by this point in the war, it's been proven that whomever has aircraft typically has the upper hand. The Japanese have lost their defensive and offensive capabilities with aircraft unless they move their carriers into position to attack. This means that the Japanese are going to attempt to retake Henderson Airfield at all cost. By early September 1942, the Japanese had performed multiple air attacks and even ground attacks in an attempt to retake Henderson Airfield, but they have failed time and time again. Now it is time for the Navy to get involved, and the solution is going to be a shore bombardment. Serious planning commences on October 3rd. Battleship Division 3, under the command of Rear Admiral Kirita, was selected for the bombardment. This consisted of the fast battleships Congo and Haruna. Kirita strongly protested using these two capital ships in the bombardment, as he saw it too great of a risk to their safety, but in the end, Commander-in-Chief Admiral Izuroku Yamamoto would overrule him and the two battleships would participate. They would be supported by the ships listed on your screen. Three primary projectiles for the 14-inch guns would be used during the bombardment. Both Congo and Haruna would use Type 1 AP shells, whilst Congo would use the Type 3 common projectile, and Haruna would use the Type 0 common projectile. The only reason Haruna did not use the Type 3 is because not enough shells were produced in time for the bombardment, as it was relatively new. It was also decided that the bombardment would take place at approximately 20,000 meters distance for two primary reasons. The Type 3 projectile Congo would be using lacked precision at shorter distances, so 20,000 meters was an optimum range for this projectile. And the other reason is the destroyers that will be screening the battleships need to be kept out of shore bombardment range. By 3.30 a.m. on October 13th, the Japanese forces were in position, and the attack force would separate from the supporting force, and its destination was just off Henderson Airfield at Guadalcanal. As the attack force approached its destination at 9.45 a.m., an enemy flying boat had been spotted, but the Japanese force believed that it had not been detected, and it continued on course. By 14.01, the IJN Izutsu, a light cruiser, launched a seaplane to perform reconnaissance duty for the force as it neared its destination, and it would spot as follows. One force contained an aircraft carrier 70 nautical miles southwest of Rennell Island, one enemy aircraft carrier, possibly Saratoga, at 1158 south, 162.05 east, and six enemy destroyers with two freighters positioned off Lunga Point. Based off the intelligence picked up by the reconnaissance aircraft, the commanders of the force decided that the probability of encountering ships during the night was quite high currently, and thus by 1600, the destroyers were prepared for action. By 2312, the attack force was finally in position and trained its gun to starboards in preparation for the bombardment. By 2316, orders came through from the division commander, Vice Admiral Kirita, that bombardment would commence at 2335. By this point, the battleships would do a 180 degree turn, placing their guns to port. At 2329, the observation stations and rangefinding stations began placing their bearings, and by 2334, the bearings had been decided, and at 2336, Congo behives its first salvo, the bombardment finally begins. Congo and Haruna would fire their Type 3 and Type 0 incendiary shells first, which would be fired in approximately 3 minute intervals. By 2357, Congo's bridge received a report that all Type 3 shells had been consumed, meaning the battleship was forced over to using its Type 1 AP projectiles, whilst Haruna would continue firing Type 0 shells 
for the next several minutes. At approximately the same time Congo runs out of its Type 3 projectile, US forces begin firing back with shore batteries, however the Japanese force is too far and all of the shells land short. 13 minutes past midnight, the Japanese guns fell silent as the force needed to perform another 180 degree turn and their guns were trained to starboard once again, firing would recommence approximately 10 minutes later. After the bombardment continued for several more minutes, ceasefire was ordered and the attack force would retire for the night. By the time the battleships had finished firing, Congo had fired 331 Type 1 shells along with 104 Type 3 shells, whilst Haruna had fired 294 Type 1 shells and 189 Type 0 shells. The total between the two battleships was 918 14-inch projectiles. These would all be used against Henderson Airfield to great effect. Multiple fires had broken out, buildings were damaged, and more than half of the US aircraft on the airfield were damaged or destroyed. However, the 14-inch guns were not the only weapons used by the battleships that night. Their 6-inch secondaries also fired a total of 48 shells, 27 from Congo and 21 from Haruna. These were firing back at the shore batteries that were attempting to attack the destroyers, screening the battleships. This night bombardment had proved a resounding success. Congo had successfully tested the Type 3 shell in action for the first time, and the shell proved quite effective. The US forces in the area were now psychologically affected, along with suffering rather great material losses at the airfield. This was also the largest and most effective battleship bombardment performed to date, as firing nearly a thousand rounds was quite the record. Even with all of the successes this bombardment had brought along with the Japanese victory, in the grand scheme of things, this can also be considered a failure, as the Japanese would never reoccupy Henderson Airfield, and they would lose the Solomon Islands altogether by 1943. So, in the grand scheme, this is a success, but it was within a massive failure.